Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Recharge Marketplace Daily Devotion. Guess what, guys? Today is Friday. Yes, you know, June the 18th. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of us, many of us, including myself, is looking forward to the weekend. So I want to go ahead and just get into this devotion because you know, guys, I have been up early this morning, uh, just kind of reading over this devotion. And, you know, when you start reading the word of God, uh, many times one verse or one, you know, chapter will lead to another chapter and then another. And, and I kind of got caught up this morning because I was reading regarding King David. Many of you know King David. Yes, King David. He is the one that slept with Bathsheba and then also uh, had her husband Uriah killed, who was a faithful, faithful soldier in the king's army. So, yeah, um, my... Um, I had some issues with that this morning. I had some issues, you know, when you, you know, when you're faithful to someone who is in authority over you. You know, the Lord told us, the Word of God tells us to to uh, obey those that have rule over us. And then when we be faithful to those who have authority and rule over us, like many of us, you know, try to be faithful on our jobs, try to be faithful in our marriage, try to be faithful in the ministry. And then those people that have authority over us, misuse of power, misuse their authority. Yeah, I, I, I had an issue with that this morning. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it just goes to show how we all, because David, you know, in the word of God, it says that he was a man after God's own heart. Uh, so uh, our devotion is actually coming from Psalms, the 51st chapter. Uh, and I was going to, you know, it, it, it starts at the, you know, the devotion is starting at the seventh verse. But you know what? Because this is a prayer of repentance. I just really want to read quite a bit of it. Okay, so I'm just going to read a little bit of it because I want to pray this prayer. Um, well, you know what? Let me just do that at the end of the devotion. So I pray this prayer of repentance. Uh, and we and you can, and we can all pray it together. You can repeat after me, or I can just read it and pray it. But let me just tell you. Let me just read a little bit about the story. Then you'll know. You know, we, we all need the blood of Jesus to wash us as white as snow. Amen. Because we all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And so let me just read the little story here. It is about an innocent victim, okay? It's talking about Uriah the Hittite, uh, who was one of David's mighty men. He was one of David's mighty men in the army. The name Uriah, it actually means flame of the Lord or the Lord is light. So this was, you know, a Hittite who had actually, uh, who had actually, you know, been converted. You know, he, he had actually uh, came to the Lord. Uh, wasn't wasn't born, you know, uh, in Israel, but he had given his life to the Lord, and here it proved to be more faithful than David uh, to to the standard of righteousness. I put it that way. So uh, his name means the Lord is light. The fact that he is called a Hittite suggests that he may have been a foreign mercenary who had become a worshiper of Israel's God. Look at that. Immediately, a contrast is set before the reader. And here that contrast is, on the one hand, there was David, the Lord's anointed, okay? David was the Lord's anointed. Have ever ran across, you know, the Bible says, touch not mine anointed, neither do my prophets no harm. Have ever ran across the one who was just really anointed of the Lord? Well, this is what David, he was God's anointed, the regent of God's on earth, the, reg the, the regent of God on earth. On the other hand, there was Uriah. Okay, he was a convert. He was a man who was not, like I said earlier, born in the faith of Israel. Okay, but who willingly chose it for his own. He willingly chose to live this life for his own. David used his authority as king to take advantage of Uriah, uh, Uriah's wife Bathsheba while Uriah was fighting a war for Israel. He took advantage, okay? He took advantage of her. 
You know, he walks out on the king's uh, court, you know, uh, one day, you know, on his tower, and he overlooks this beautiful woman that is bathing in her own yard, in her at her own house, minding her own business, <laughs> and he sends for her, okay? So here at Beersheba, uh, Uriah's wife, Beersheba, Beersheba, while Uriah was fighting a war for Israel, as a result of David's sin, Beersheba became pregnant. So as a result of his sin, she becomes pregnant. David attempted to cover things up by calling Uriah home from battle. Uh, <laughs> you know, I guess he figured if he called, you know, her husband home, then he would lay with her. But, but listen to this, you know, he was so faithful to the king. He was so faithful to his duty that he would not, while his, his comrades and while his commander in chief and while his, his friends were out there fighting on the front line and fighting uh, in war, he would not take advantage of his, his, his coming home and sleep with his own wife. That's how faithful and how loyal he was. So it says here that, um, so <laughs> as a result of David's sin, Bathsheba became pregnant. David attempted to cover things up by calling Uriah home from battle. If Uriah had relations with his wife while on leave, he might be be believe the child was his. <laughs> However, Uriah, the ever-dedicated soldier, refused to enjoy the comforts of home while his comrades were on the battlefield. <laughs> In this, he showed himself to be more righteous than David. In this, he showed himself to be more righteous than David. Mm. Yet David persisted. You know, you ever, you ever met anybody that have done wrong and because they have done wrong, they try to make you stoop to their level so they can feel better? <laughs> I mean, I know you know people like that, you know, uh, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, yeah, yeah, Lady Odessa, Mama Trice, whatever you want to call me, I'm going to tell you, don't let them do it to you. Don't you stoop to their level, okay? Don't don't you let them do it to you. Because you know what? Uh, God says revenge is his. He's going he's going to have justice. God is going to have justice. So anyway, uh <laughs> yet David persisted in covering up his sin. He attempted to break Uriah's resolve by giving him too much to drink. Okay, so it says that <laughs> when Uriah did not stoop to David's level, it says Uriah's words in verse 11 and 11 must have stung David. Okay, when Uriah, he, the ever dedicated soldier, when he refused to enjoy the comforts of home while his comrades was on battle, in this he showed himself to be more righteous than David, his words must have stung David's conscience. See, when you when you do what's right anyway, your enemies, <laughs> those who try to do you wrong, they can't they can't stand it. It eats them alive. He had neglected his duty. The King David, you know, he 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 neglected his duty as king as watching over, you know, someone who's serving him. But Uriah, see, he didn't stoop to his level. He he didn't he didn't elect the king. He still he still stood faithful in what he was called to do. And so it said, uh, moreover, it says that um, he had neglected his duty. Moreover, he had stolen his uh, the wife of one of his best soldiers while his warriors risked their lives for him. Yet David persisted in covering up his sin. So when he couldn't get in one way, he still persisted in trying to cover up his sin. Instead of, instead of him just repenting and saying, God, forgive me, you know, I, I did this. Let the chips fall where they may. He still tried to cover up his sin. You ever known anybody like that? Maybe you've been like that. <laughs> uh, he attempted to break Uriah's resolve by giving him too much to drink. But even the effects of alcohol <laughs> could not, look at that. Even the effects of alcohol could not break. It, it could not soften Uriah's determination. Once again, he refused to enjoy the comforts that was offered to him. The comforts of, of going in and, and making love to his wife. <laughs> Falling, failing to cover up sin, David plotted the lawyer soldier's death. So see, that still wasn't even enough. 
he still even went further. Perhaps David could not face the shame of seeing Uriah after the warrior had learned that David had slept with his wife. So maybe, you know, his, his own guilt was eating him up because, you know, he couldn't face the thought of when Uriah found out and here, you know, he's saying, you know, I'm out here on, on the battlefield for you. I'm out here protecting Israel for you. I'm not even a true Israelite. I'm a head tight. And I'm over here because I've been converted. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm out here fighting for you. And here, this is what you do to me. And this is David. Now, this is a man that, you know, the Bible says was after God's own heart. And I re really believe the reason why God says that is because David, when he, when he did find out and he, when he didn't realize, I should say, that he was wrong, he repented. And that's why we must always have a heart that can, that, that can be softened and a heart that can turn to God. Even when we're wrong, pride, it, it, it defends the stronghold. When you allow pride, your pride to, to, to stand up, it defends your wrong. And, and, and you need to humble yourself so that you can be forgiven. Because all you do is make matters worse when you do not allow and ask for forgiveness. Okay, so um, so here it says here, let me just go on with the story here, because I know. So failing to cover up sin, David plotted the loyal, the, the loyal soldier's death. Perhaps David could not face the shame of seeing Uriah after the warrior had learned that David had slept with his wife. David orders, these are David's orders, which was carried back to the battle line by Uriah himself. He gave <laughs> uh, the man who was fighting for him his own walking, his own death papers. He gave the orders that was carried by, by Uriah in the heat, uh, uh, carried by, uh, by Uriah, hmm. where for Joab, Joab now was the commander of chief. He was the commander of the army. So Uriah here, he, he, David gives him the order to give to Joab. And these were the orders. Listen to this. To put Uriah in the heart of battle and then to withdraw the other soldiers so that Uriah would be left alone and killed. So Uriah died in battle because the king would not admit his wrong. After Uriah's death, David took Bathsheba as his wife as soon as possible to make it appear that the child was legitimate. However, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You read that? And, uh, and this is what I'm reading. It comes from 2 Samuel the 11th chapter, I should have given you that first. Second Samuel, you can go back and read it for yourself. The 11th chapter, and I, I want you to read the 12th chapter as well so you can hear what happened, okay? So um, it says that, however, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Although David had managed to conceal his sin from the people, God knew about it. David's sin would not go unpunished. Even the king of Israel had to sub submit to God's discipline. So the prayer that I want to pray for you today is coming from Psalms, the 51st chapter, because you know what? We all make mistakes. We all do things that are not pleasing to God. And, and you know what? I can't stand in judgment of you and you can't stand in judgment of anyone, uh, anyone else either. So this prayer, it, it comes from Psalms 51, and I'm just going to read it until I feel out of the Lord to stop. But it says, it says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. So see, you got to acknowledge when you've done wrong. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. So you may think you're doing something wrong to someone else to get back at them, but you're only doing it against God and against yourself. You're heaping coals of fire on, on your own head as the old people used to say, <laughs> that thou mightest be justified when thou speak and be cleared when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. 
Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop. This is, should be your prayer. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be cleansed. Purge me, O God, and I shall be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. I'm talking about whiter than snow. Only the blood of Jesus can make you whiter than snow. You need to ask him today. Today is Friday. What better day than today than to ask him to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sins, forgive you of your wrongs, even forgive those that have wronged you like David wronged Uriah. You know what? Ask God to forgive those that have wronged you, to purge you with hyssop, make you, you to hear the joy of gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, O Lord, and blot out mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Ask him to do that with for you today. Create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. And so I just wanted to pray that prayer. I read the first 10 verses of uh, of Psalms, the 51st chapter. I know this is a little bit different than how we do things, but I just had to, had to, you know, because you, you may have people that are in authority over you that is doing you wrong. Pray for them. Pray for them. Let me tell you, God eyes is in every place. He is beholding the good and the evil, and he will have his just reward. Know that, know that, know that. I know that. With all, that's why I live my life daily, trying to do what is right toward others and toward God. Because let me tell you, what you reap, oh honey, trust me, you shall sow. So until Monday, this is the last day, amen, of our daily devotion for the marketplace on Facebook. But until Monday, you all have a blessed weekend. Stay out of trouble. And uh, it may be a, a rainy weekend this weekend, at least here in Florida. I'm not, you know, I know this go all over, but here in the Sunshine State, it may not be so sunshiny. But um, you stay safe and bless you. See you Monday. Smooches. Mm -hmm.